What can you say about not having the right protection? Well, mister, you can say, ouch, and, oh, that hurts. And, golly jeepers, quit that. Better to get Edge Pro Gel protection. Edge gives you a close, comfortable shave, so you can trade in that old scraped up feeling for a new feeling of, yeah, baby. Look great, feel great. Edge Pro Gel, save your skin. This NFL Films production is a presentation of the National Football League. Sponsored by Edge Shave Gel, the ultimate protection for every kind of face. Like the path flown by their namesake, the 2001 Atlanta Falcons experienced both the winds of fortune and the gusts of despair. Of their 16 games, half were against playoff teams. And after circling the possibility of their own playoff berth, the 2001 Falcons came to rest just short of a winning season. They were descendants of a proud lineage that began in 1966. As the decades passed, the team's identity evolved. The expansion generation started the franchise. The Barkowski generation brought it to prominence and the Dirty Bird generation provided its greatest glory. Now, it's time to ride yet another current of change. The 2002 season will bring a new owner, a new division, and a new attitude. Led by quarterback Michael Vick, they are a generation built for speed and bursting with power. They are the rising generation. The events of September 11th saddened the entire nation. The NFL suspended play for a week of mourning. And when the games resumed, the Falcons, along with the rest of the country, turned to the playing field for some measure of comfort. With the score tied at 10, Reggie Kelly, Ephraim Salam and Travis Claridge protected Chris Chandler, who found Jamal Anderson on a 94-yard touchdown strike, the second longest in franchise history. 35-40, Anderson streaking toward the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons, 94 yards. The fans are going nuts. Here comes Mike Vick checking into the game. More history was made in the fourth quarter when Michael Vick came in on third and goal to record his first NFL touchdown. Mike Vick will keep the football. He will try to get into the end zone. Vick pulling his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons! Fans of the black and red knew this was the first of many touchdowns to be scored by number seven. In 104 degree heat, the Arizona Cardinals chose to wear their white uniforms, forcing the Falcons to wear their black home jerseys. The disadvantages continued when Jamal Anderson injured his knee. It would keep him sidelined for the remainder of the season. Backup Maurice Smith recovered from early missteps and helped receiver Terrence Mathis become the Falcons' all-time touchdown leader with 57. On third and two, Mathis in motion to the near side. Straight drop is Chandler across the middle. Terrence Mathis makes the catch up the three, takes a hit, and spins into the end zone. Touchdown, Terrence Mathis. Maurice Smith began his own tally by scoring his first two NFL touchdowns. 20, 25, 30, yes. 35, 40. Yes. Maurice Smith yes. in Arizona territory trying to sprint to the end yes. zone. Touchdown, Maurice right. Smith. He takes the ball and just blasts by everybody else. The Falcons put the heat on the Cardinals in the second half. The result, a meltdown. Plummer wants to throw, gets away from some of the pressure, and it's picked off! Intercepted by Ray Buchanan, 45-50, and thrown out of bounds at the 42-yard line. The Battle of the Birds was won by the outstretched claws of the Falcons. Three weeks later, they entered another battle. This one, much closer to home. 
know what time it is. Battle of the South. Whatever it takes. Forget the X's and O's. Whatever it takes to win this game, it's going to happen. After an overtime loss to San Francisco, the Falcons were 2-3. and three. Chris Chandler and LG Crumpler were determined to get the team back on track. Going downfield, Crumpler is out there, makes the catch, 20, 15, 5, and spun into the end zone, touchdown Falcons! The matchup was a family reunion for quarterback Aaron Brooks and his cousin Michael Vick. But moving the ball against the Falcons' defense was no picnic for the Saints. setting is Chandler now firing long out there is Jefferson five touchdown Falcons oh yes we finally got one how about it how about it we finally got one hey I told y'all it's gonna be a dog fight battle of the south this is the first round we got one more to go we pulled it out we knew it we can we can win this thing if we don't shoot ourselves in the foot today we didn't baby Quick feet are just one trait found in Pro Bowl linebacker Keith Brooking. With the retirement of Jesse Tuggle, Brooking moved to the middle and continued a proud tradition that began with Tommy Novus. Along with Brooking were linebackers Chris Draft, number 53 Mark Simino, and Henri Crockett. The men most capable of raising the Georgia Dome roof were lineman Brady Smith, Shane Drenet, Travis Hall, Ronald Clemens, Ed Jasper, and Patrick Kearney, who led the team with 12 sacks. Yes, sir, Pat Kearney again. Believe in the Falcons. The Falcons had plenty of faith in Ashley Ambrose and fellow cornerback Ray Buchanan. Hocus, Hocus, the focus is on the secondary and a strong belief in safety's Gerald McBurroughs, John Dale Carty, and Corey Hall. Now the Falcon defense rises again. Chris Chandler spent the season walking side by side with Michael Vick, teaching the rookie all he knew. When Chandler set out week nine with a rib injury, Vick made his first NFL start. Vick play action, rolling left, firing out to the Punt returner Darian Gordon set the all-time Falcons return mark with 139 yards in the game. His runbacks, including this 74-yard scamper, put the offense in position to score. They did just that, thanks to the abilities of number 85 Brian Kozlowski and quarterback Doug Johnson. He wants to throw. The Falcons' defense needed to shut down the Cowboys the rest of the way. They did so by attacking the line of scrimmage. Deep drop, looking, looking, firing down. Field is intercepted by Keith Brooking, and the Falcons win. At 4-4, four four, it was time for the Falcons to make a run for the playoffs. Green Bay may not be the best place to visit when looking to enter the playoff chase, especially when facing Brett Favre, who hadn't lost at Lambeau in nine straight games. The Falcons' defense took the challenge to heart. Three interceptions, two sacks, and one fumble recovery gave Brett Favre zero breathing room in the pocket. The Falcons had their own elder statesman in Chris Chandler, who returned from his injury to outduel Farr, throwing for 352 yards. He's at the 10, bounces off one tackle, and then spins into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons! Although they were double-digit underdogs, the Falcons soon took a double-digit lead. Fires across the middle, cut the The Falcons have extended their lead here in the Lambeau Field. 
Still, Dan Reeves was well aware of Favre's fourth quarter heroics. Second and ten from the 45. Shotgun for Brett Favre. Straight drop. Looking. Here comes the pressure. He wants it all going oh, long. Oh. It's up for grabs. And it's picked off by Ashley Ambrose at the three-yard line. And that's your ball game. Wow. All eyes were now on the Falcons as they sought their third straight win. The team had turned a corner just as Bob Christian did on his way to a 122 all-purpose yard performance. Touchdown Falcons, a four-yard touchdown run by Bob Christian, and why not? He was the principal in that 99-yard drive. During a third-quarter goal line stand, the defense stopped Carolina on four straight downs. The Falcons were intent on protecting their playoff chances down to the very last yard. The Panthers did no better in the sky, where a Falcon feels most at home. At six and four, the Falcons had already taken a huge step forward from their 2000 campaign. Strong footing was important to the team's leading scorer, place kicker Jay Feely. And the punts of fellow newcomer Chris Moore had teams backing up all season long. The special teams were relentless in their coverage. Thanks to Mark Simino, Derek Rackley, Artie Ulmer, Matt Stewart, Travis Jervy, and Derek Vaughn, who enjoyed stopping returns as much as he liked running them back. It is high and taken by Derek Vaughn at the four yard line. He's to the 10, he's to the 15, the 20, the 25, 30, yes. 35, 40, 45, 50. Goodbye, Derek Vaughn. The special teams also had a knack for catching opponents off guard. Standing at his own 17 yard line, Fake Moore throwing the ball to Bob yeah. Christian, near side 40, 45, 50, cutting it toward the middle, 45, 40, 35, 30. And that surprised absolutely everybody. No surprise matched the unexpected loss of Jamal Anderson, but Maurice Smith filled in admirably. He received plenty of help from fullback Bob Christian, who preferred not to use the element of surprise. What a great job by Bob, Bob Christian. Christian. Just first right up the middle. What, what a run by Christian. The method he taught rookie George Lane was more straightforward. Just put your head down and bulldoze everything in your path. Reaching into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Bob Christian in. Christian's mentality fit right in with the Falcons' tight end crew. Toughness was something Reggie Kelly took seriously. As did Brian Kozlowski, whose specialties included tough receptions and even tougher runs after the catch. Rookie standout LG Crumpler combined the attitude of a lineman and the hands of a receiver to make his mark. We have seen it before from LG Crumpler, the great ability to know where he is on the football field. Fans can expect to see more of young receivers Quentin McCord and Sean Mills, who took lessons from 11-year veteran Sean Jefferson. Joining them in the wings was Brian Finneran. Firing into the end zone, up top, catch made by Brian Finneran. A leaping grab. Finneran had a breakout year, averaging 21 yards per catch. Remarkably, 20 of his 23 catches were for first downs or touchdowns. He also contributed to special teams and even made a game-saving defensive play. The men up front, led by veteran Bob Whitfield, were Todd McClure, Travis Claridge, Keenan Forney, Roberto Garza, and Michael Thompson. All line on three. One, two, three. All All right. The Falcons were still in the playoff chase when they took the field for the final home game of the season. To keep them within reach, Chris Chandler found Brian Finneran, whose sprawling dive landed just short of the end zone. 
Maurice Smith took care of the remaining inches. Here's the give. Smith up the middle. Smith edge of the end zone. Touchdown. Falcons opening drive. One of the biggest plays came in a fourth quarter fingertip catch by LG Crumpler, which stretched the Falcons lead to 10. Although Chris Chandler threw for a franchise record 431 yards, the game's outcome rested on the foot of Jay Feely. All right, 53 yard field goal attempt by Jay Feely for the ball game. Count. Two seconds are left. Count. Crowd on their feet. The snap, the hold, the kick is it's up. It's, it's long enough. Yes. It is. before Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> no one would gift wrap a playoff spot for the Falcons. They would have to earn it in week 16. Play with a lot of pride. Play hard for 60 minutes. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. With a possible playoff berth at stake, the Falcons landed in Miami, hoping to extend their season into the wild card weekend. It is to Smith. Left side. Pounds into the end zone. That's one. This wasn't the NHL, where it seems everyone makes the playoffs. This was the NFL, and both teams were playing with desperation for a postseason appearance. Gerald McBurrows came up with the football after the big stick on James McKnight coming across the middle. Miami showing blitz. Here comes the pressure. Chandler is hit. Chandler not getting up. When Chris Chandler went down with an injury, the game was turned over to Michael Vick. Like the Falcons had done all season, Vick scrambled for victory. His determination sparked a second half comeback. When needed, he threw the ball as if the survival of the franchise depended on it. His efforts produced three plays that served as a microcosm of the 2001 season. Play action, setting up his Vic, now rolling, throwing, the catch is made, touchdown Falcons. The first was ruled a touchdown. The second could have been ruled a touchdown. Firing for Christian who makes the catch. Yes. Oh, touchdown yeah. Falcons. Let's see, come on, give it to him. Shouldn't even be close. And the third should have been ruled a touchdown. Right, is he into the end zone or not? Falcons are signaling six, but nothing from the officials. Could have been and should have been a small consolation for a team that fell short of the playoffs. After finishing the year with a 7-9 and nine record, the Falcons will wipe the scoreboards clean and enter the 2002 season with a blank slate. The uh, sale of the Atlanta Falcons from the Smith family to uh, Arthur Blank was approved unanimously by our membership. This obviously is a uh, very special day uh, for me and for my family and for all of Atlanta and for the state of, uh, the state of Georgia as well. And this uh, fulfills a dream I've had for a lot of years and I'm doing what I can to very quickly build a strong team and I'm pleased to announce the strongest part of that team is an extension of the contract for Dan Reeves. My job now is to move forward and trying to fulfill the dream that Arthur's talking about and I'm excited about that. I will tell you that uh, I personally will not rest until I have an opportunity to wear a Super Bowl ring on behalf of everybody in Atlanta and everybody in the state of, of Georgia. 2001 was also a time to say goodbye to several milestone players. Chris Chandler departs as the only quarterback to lead the Falcons to a Super Bowl. And his favorite target, Terrence Mathis, leaves as the team's all-time leading receiver. If the Falcons are to raise a Super Bowl banner inside the Georgia Dome, such changes, however painful, are necessary. The future is now, and its name is Michael Vick. Vick is now in the game. Vick 
is arguably the most exciting player ever to wear a Falcons uniform. Vic is now in the game. When Atlanta traded up in the 2001 draft to acquire Vic, the Falcons knew they would one day ask him to carry the team. That day has arrived. His speed is well advertised, but seeing it in person makes fans and players alike understand why Vic has become synonymous with quick. His ability to throw the deep ball strikes fear in the hearts of secondaries around the league. All Michael Vick needs now is time, time to mature, and time to excel. To help in that process, the Falcons signed free agent running back Warwick Dunn. As a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Dunn was one of the league's best at sneaking into the end zone. Also joining the Falcons is tackle Todd Weiner from Seattle, along with a man who knows all about tackling, defensive coordinator Wade Phillips. He'll be reunited with former Buffalo players Keon Carpenter and number 52, John Hollisett. From Green Bay comes John Theory and Alan Rossum, both familiar with what it takes to be part of a winning team. That's exactly what new owner Arthur Blank is building. The team needs to take on, in terms of the offense, the, uh, the kind of personality that Michael has, which is going to be very fast and very uh, explosive. Looking at Michael Vick as a centerpiece of that team going forward, given his abilities, both as a, as a passer and as a runner, I think it'll be very exciting for years to come. I think we need to take on the characteristics of a Keith Brooklyn on defense, which is tough and quick, and a team that's very responsive to the fans. Falcons fans have heard the stories surrounding the Barkowski generation and they've witnessed the triumphs of the Dirty Bird generation. And they'll be watching as Dan Reeves leads a new generation into a new division. With Carolina, New Orleans, and Tampa Bay in the NFC South, the Falcons will be fighting for regional supremacy. In Atlanta, the time has come for a new breed of players. The time has come for the rising generation. Edge Pro Gel presents the Atlanta Falcons ultimate performance of 2001. In week 15, Chris Chandler threw for a franchise record 431 yards and two touchdowns, including a 63-yard pass to Tony Martin. The big home run strike of 63 yards. Jay Feely kicked the game-winning field goal in a 33-30 victory over Buffalo. How about that? Oh, man, what a game. Sponsored by Edge Shave Gel, the ultimate protection for every kind of face. This NFL Films production has been brought to you by the National Football League. The NFL is online at www.nfl.com.